Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Hello everyone, welcome back to Silicon Valley. We are here at the Hadoop Summit 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, George Gilbert, SiliconANGLE Media is in Wikibon's big data analyst. We are here with Tony Cavanaugh, CMO of Actian. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much, guys. Good to see you again. First time on The Cube. Cube alumni, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, give us the update on Actian. What's going on vis-a-vis -vis the landscape of the exploding big data world here in this ecosystem has gone beyond Hadoop. Yeah. Things are changing, and but it's growing. I mean, there's a lot of growth going on, but it wasn't growing the way people thought it was 10 years ago. It's completely going in a different yeah. direction. Yeah, you know, um, it's a fascinating marketplace. It's no doubt things are changing radically right now. And if anybody doesn't see that coming, they've got, they got some waking up to do. But the cool thing is Actian. Actian is a very interesting company. Uh, we've been, you know, I've heard directly from customers, and we've been a little bit quiet over the past few years, so I want to just take a couple of minutes to uh, give you guys and, and the viewers a, a view into what, who Actian are and what we do. You know, so it's a very interesting company. We're probably one of the best uh, kept secrets in Silicon, Silicon Valley right now. Um, we're a, a little bit of a dark horse. Um, we are actually one of the largest privately held uh, software companies out there. We have over 400 uh, customers, I'm sorry, we have over 400 employees worldwide and over 10,000 customers, believe it or not. I'll tell you a reason why that's so, that, that, that is the way it is in a second. But we are a por product portfolio company, so we have acquired companies along the way to build the current pro product portfolio set that we have. And what we do, we segmented those into two main categories, and the first of which is what we call the data management and integration business. Um, at the core of that is, and I'm sure everybody knows this name, is the core of that is the Ingress database. And I'm sure you're familiar with Ingress. Yeah, I Ingress. learned it in college, it, <laughs> database class. It's Ingress. It's undergraduate. I won't date you. Uh, <laughs> That's the 80s. But it is hitting its 40 <laughs> years uh, right now. I think it's 40 years old this, this, this year. I uh, wasn't 10, and believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I no, but it's a, it's a proven database. I mean, it is a it's proven an industry database. standard. It's one of those things that is yeah. still deployed, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Even to the point where it's it's almost a sleeping giant, if you like. So we have some of the largest companies in the world. Give an example of like some of the things. I mean, most people think of Ingress like, oh, it's a mainframe, only small selection. It's not like that at all. It's a little bit more, little bit more it's yeah. larger than that. Can you give an example of yeah, like so the kinds of deployments that Ingress is still running? Yeah, so you have, so one of the largest, I can't name the name specifically, one of the largest airlines companies in the world use it uh, to, to schedule their aircraft around the world. I mean, that's a pretty important mission, mission critical. Cr mission yeah. critical. Uh, application, uh, you know, we have uh, we have um, revenue commissioners in a couple of European countries that use us maniacally, and they're not they no intention of moving off because there's such a, uh, there's such footprint. a deep footprint, and, yeah. and and they've got such confidence in it, they just have no intention of moving from it. Uh, so it's a really it's a solid business, um, but of course it's got that a little bit of baggage because along came Oracle, along came IBM, and along came uh, uh, Microsoft and SAP, and they swept the world, but we do have this great, solid, loyal, established customer base on the Ingress side. Along with that in the DMI business, as we call the data management integration business, we have other products. Uh, we have the Versant database, which is an object database. So Versant is, is in our portfolio. We got P P SQL, which is an embedded database. Uh, and then we have our integration suite, uh, which is Data Connect, Data Cloud, and Business Exchange. So we, we really do have some very interesting uh, offerings there. But we want to talk about more specifically, because it's more relevant to the show, and I'm taking up a little bit of time on this, is our uh, big data business, which is the uh, Actian Analytic Platform. And in that we have uh, Matrix, uh, we have Vector, and we have Vector in Hadoop. So Matrix is massively parallel processing database, which is deep. We have Vector, which is broad and wide. And then we have Vector H, which sits in the Hadoop ecosystem, so that you can get access to the Hadoop data, and you can analyze it very, very, very quickly uh, using SQL. 
Um, so we can talk a little bit about what trends we How does your solution to those three things fit into this ecosystem? You guys contributing to open source, you guys use open source, you're just working with open source solutions, you guys harden it, what's the role of Actian? It's great, great question. So we, are, we make a clear distinction between being open and being open source. So we are a proprietary technology. So what we like to focus on is a vector in Hadoop, because we're in with the Hadoop you know, um, uh, conference here, and we also we have Strata plus Hadoop at the- uh, So you probably have an enterprise September. customer that want certain things, and they take Hadoop, use it for what it's worth. Well, right? what, is that, what, is that the we, customer profile? Well, what we, yeah, so large enterprise customers trying to figure out how do you get to get, make sense of all of that data in Hadoop. There's a couple of, it's very interesting, I've been talking to Gartner and looking, doing a lot of research on Gartner reports. And talking to Mike Galtieri recently uh, about what is the, where is this business going, where is this market going, and he referenced uh, this concept of data lakes becoming data swamps or data pits. So we're pushing lots and lots and lots of data into the Hadoop ecosystem. The challenge is, how do you get that out? And how do you get it out at speed? So we, what our real differentiation is in the in in, in our analytic uh, action analytic platform is we're fast. Now I know it sounds like a speeds and fees literally, but we're we're so fast. Uh, we have we have independent benchmarks, a TPCH benchmark. We just released a paper today in at Sigmod, which adopted the TPCH. So performance centric customers love you guys. Absolutely fast, fast, fast. And I'm talking ten, hundred, a thousand times faster than some of those. So you allow people to do data lakes with massive speed. Absolutely, that pull those query using SQL, standard query language. Okay, so let's take the impact of customers. That's probably financial transaction stuff. Okay, now how do, in this world, we're seeing a couple trends I want to get your thoughts on and how you see that, what's your vision there. The um, Docker container madness, we're seeing that at the application developer. Hadoop and open source in general seems to be stalled, right? Obviously, we have Arun Murthy on, the, on, on here saying, on the Cube saying, it's gone beyond Hadoop, which is basically implying Hadoop is one building block of a few other fundamental yeah. building blocks in big data. Yeah. So you have a developer tsunami coming in, application greenfield and brownfield developer opportunities, plus this DevOps cloud environment yeah. that's now gone mainstream. Yeah. So you have a developer dream situation here for the enterprise customers, because they now have the capability. Where do you guys fit into that, that whole trend? Well, I think, well, we step back. There is, is there it is integration or? So, um, there's a lot, there's a big, very big question there. There's a lot of things Okay, big trend about. is DevOps, cloud, and developers. You could argue that it's a multi-tool world, multi-analytical yeah. tool world, integration world, the ecosystem is critical. So a lot of people are trying to figure out what the chessboard looks like. Yeah, well, customers are. We are, we are well, one of our top, the way we describe ourselves when we're talking to prospects and, and the market is that we solve some of the, the, the world's toughest data challenges. And with our data management and integration capabilities, we have the capabilities there to do that. And on our analytic platform, we have the capabilities to do that. But what we're seeing is, there's so you a- you have that today, integration's a big part of that. Integration is a big part of what we do. So it sits alongside okay. that, that ingress database. We have those additional offerings that allow so us So the ingress to, guys love you because they can, that's a path to the new promised land. That it, for integration, yeah. For integration. It, yeah, and if you look at the, even in the Hadoop ecosystem, one of the big challenges on the big data world is data management, it's data integration, it's data so sovereignty. So we connect. can, at one start of, part of our business, yes. Okay. The other side, speaking. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and not a connector as in like, you know, <laughs> API connector. <laughs> on the other side of the business is, I'm going to quickly pass that yeah, over, yeah, right? Yeah. We, uh, stuff happens on theCUBE, it's live, so that's <laughs> what it is. And on the other side is the analytical business, is, yeah. is our analytical uh, business. So what's, it, what's interesting though is that yes, there's a lot of this groundswell of developers who are getting involved and who are you know really rolling through uh, you know, new open source technology, who are really trying to get, you know, get their arms around what is the next big thing. The problem is that you know a lot of these open source technologies are not enterprise grade per se. They really aren't. When it comes down to how do we make this thing work for the enterprise. The interesting uh, uh, staff from Gartner talks about, there's two of them, if I can quote them. I haven't read them, written them, wrote them I wrote them down also, okay, <laughs> but I'm trying ahead. to do them from memory. Uh, by tw through 2018, they say that 90% of data lakes are useless. 
or will be useless by 2018 because of just they have become just this murky amalgamation of data. And folks are going to try and see how they can get things out I'm of sure it. I'm sure I agree with that, but that's okay. No, it's, you know, it's a good Debatable. data point. Yeah. Another data point is that 70 by 2018, through 2018 again, 70% uh, of Hadoop implementations will not have realized the ROI that they set out to do just because of the, just an inappropriate or, or unsuccessful implementation or skills gap. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a skills gap along with these new technologies. There's well, this I would, I would, uh, this is a good point. You brought up something that George and I and Peter Burst talking about the valuation of data question, which is what is the value of the data? You can say, oh, if I'm running an Ingress database, I'm running flight plans on Ingress, that's pretty damn important. That data yep. is pretty valuable yep. for the company. Yep. But the data lake thing is interesting. So for, that forecast assumes that that data is not worth anything or is not being used or yep. it's not addressable. Yep. So you could argue, we are arguing that, in the Wikibon team is that if you've got a data lake and the data is just sitting there and it quote, looks like a swamp, if it's addressable and can move in real time at the right spot, it then becomes valuable. Yeah. So it's the potential value of the data. So the question is, if you've got a swamp that's not addressable and can't move with low latency yeah. to a transaction, then it's not valuable. It's not valuable, exactly. So the question is, that kind of poo-poo's that thing, so yeah. you have to have the addressable data you, you, out you, there. How do you pull it out of the swamp? So so exactly, so you've got to, well first of all, you've got to have the right plan. You've got to, I don't think we, we have actually figured this big data world out. The great thing is there's all these people who have got this massive mind share around trying to figure this thing out, we haven't quite gotten there. The, the future is bright, as we talked about, but where does it land, and where is the value in that? And we're trying to help companies do that, with Actian allowing you to get access to that data, data in a language that, that, that developers understand, which is SQL yeah. when it comes down to it. So question on, on Actian and then part of a, being part of a broader product line, or, or in this case, um, not in terms of, some of the cloud vendors are putting together data management fabric, you know, where it's a couple specialized databases that are kind of deeply integrated with each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, four or five years ago, you know, like when Impala was just being talked about and introduced, um, people were like, okay, so now we have a, we're going to have a mature, you know, BI-oriented SQL engine, we'll have Hive for ETL. Um, but we had a profusion of these Database. data, databases. Yeah. What's the access of competition now? So I think here's is what's really interesting, and you know, I spent a couple of years at, at DataStax, which was a fantastic uh, company, great technology, great people. What emerged from that over the year, over the couple of years, is that this, the database, databases are moving to this multi-model world. So uh, recently, for like the data stacks, they have, they have issued, a, the released a DSE graph, or data stacks enterprise graph. So they're focusing in on different type of problem that these databases solve different problems, right? There's different use cases very much for different databases. There's something like 290 plus databases um, out there, and uh, they're all built for varying, varying purposes. So you've got to look across uh, you know, what is the use case, what are the use cases you're trying to address, and what is the right database for that? Well, the database, if they, if they pick, if they don't have open data, if, if you have open data, it assumes the database is not an issue. Yeah. You pick your database and just, yeah. as long as it's open. Yeah. So, but, but you have to have it, but it depends on what you're trying to solve for. So graph solves for something very, very God, different okay. from a column store. And it does things very, very differently. So you've got that LinkedIn model or that Facebook model. It's a, it's a relationship model. And not a relational model, but the relationships and it's vertices and axes and nodes and so on. And then you have your, your a relational database that's a very specific use case, as does as a distributed database like an Apache Cassandra. Okay, so Tony, you have a challenge. You have Axie and have a portfolio of, of companies that were acquired together. Yeah. But now it's a patchwork. I mean, look at Google Alphabet. I mean, you're starting to see that that's now a norm in corporate business structure, yeah. and then build the synergies on top of it. Is there plans along that? Could you take a minute to explain kind of what your plans are with Axie what your thoughts are? Oh, I, you know, absolutely, and, and it, it is a challenge. I mean, particularly when you acquire companies across, you know, over a period, you know how you how do you make it all work uh, together? And I think what we have done is we have looked at you know we said right 
data management and integration is one aspect. It's a significant thing to, to, to solve for. And that the analytics piece is also something we have looked at as being separate, but there, there's definitely, there's a cross, there's a cross sell opportunity there. There's definitely a cross pollination. I mean, as we, as we talked about in the, in the Hadoop ecosystem, data management, integration, sovereignty is a very, very important thing. Oftentimes something that you've got to think of first, yeah. which is something they've had, we have for not done. global businesses have to think about that for sure. Absolutely, but we've not done that from the outset, and now it's coming back to being that. So we're, what we're doing is we're actually looking into the market, and we've had a, we're, we're having a very, we, we have an established business, and we're, yeah. we, as you said, we've over 400 employees and uh, thousands and thousands of customers, so we're, and we've got amazing technology. Now we just got to figure out where does that apply. And the world we talked about at the outset is changing, and rapidly changing. Big opportunity. So it's a massive opportunity, yeah. so it, be, it behooves us, we have to step back and go, okay, what is happening now? You know, in conferences like this, they're burgeoning. I mean, it's bigger than it was last year. Strata plus Hadoop in New York is going to be, it's going to be incredible. I mean, we're looking forward to being there. Well, it's always the, quiet, the, the eye of the storm. You don't know whether you're in the eye of the storm or the storm past your eye, but cloud has certainly over the past year, yeah. two years, but this past 20, uh, 12 months, exploded the big data world. Exploded. Now you got compute, you got interoperability, now you got Docker containers for yeah. application developers, so the whole DevOps thing is just propelling the applications into the, the data into the applications. Yeah, so, so what we've done, so to that, to that point, what we've done is we're stepping back, and we're doing our, getting out there, putting our feeders out, doing a lot of research. There's a couple of key trends that we, we, we saw, uh, we're seeing popping up. One, of course, is the continued growth of, of Hadoop. Contrary to whatever the analysts are saying about whether things are going to be successful or not, the growth is there and it's not stopping. Okay, so my final question, I got to ask the question that's on my mind, yeah. everyone's mind. Is there a master plan being hatched right now at Acting Headquarters? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're doing the research, yeah. big opportunity, a lot of assets in play here. I think, uh, just, I think you always, <laughs> you know, in our business, you've always have to be hatching a master yeah. plan. You really do. I mean, it's, it's, it's particularly at the rate at which the, the, the market is moving, yeah. you've got to always be on top of what's coming you got to be next. ahead of that next train. Because people expect that of you, and, and you know, it's, uh, for us, what's next is really, we've been quiet, I'm, t I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not behind the door about this. Acting has not been out in front of the market, and we're going to change that. We're going to change oh, it. As CMO, you're going to change that. You, you hope to change that, right? <laughs> hope to change that. All right. Yeah. Tony, thanks for coming on theCUBE. CMO Welcome. of Actian here on theCUBE at Hadoop Summit. The world is exploding. There's great stuff happening in big data. Big data cloud, analytics, all driving value. Big value. This is theCUBE, live from Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Right.